Okay, welcome to the next module, which is module seven. And so the first part of this module is just going through some like concepts or um, going through some like terminology that you need to know while we work through all the different kinds of maps. And so um, I'm just gonna jump right into going through here. So we, we work with a three-dimensional surface and that is, the challenge of putting it onto a two-dimensional, um, a two-dimensional paper. So there is no way for us to do this without any errors. So that's something that um, that we have to remember. So, there, but we're trying to minimize the errors, and we're trying to avoid as much of the errors as we can. So depending on what you choose to do with your map you're gonna have certain errors that come up. So if your map is for navigation, you probably wanna ensure that your angles and distances are pretty close to what they should be. If you are dealing with um, showing representations of like the, the, the yield of crops, you're probably more concerned about the actual, um, the actual area like in making sure that you minimize the error in the area rather than looking at the the the, the direction right because the direction is not so important so there's always a trade-off no, no matter what you do <laughs> and so what we what we are doing in this module is looking at those types of things so my first objective is looking at the different types of map projections now, and usually this module, I do a big hands-on thing with a potato and with a tennis ball and with tinfoil. And um, un unfortunately, I don't get to do that with you in this one. So I am just going to go through the PowerPoint and I'll try to allude to what we'd be doing. I will try to do a video of myself with the potato and tennis ball and tinfoil to show you what we would be doing in class as well, just to give you a different visualization. So um, what, what I'm going to do is break down maps into different categories. Now, these are not like a standard name or anything like that. Um, so if you Google them, you might find some that are with the same name, like geometric map projections. You might find that one. Um, some of the other ones, I've just kind of grouped them in, under a title. So they're, don't take them as like, well, it's supposed to be under this category. It's just that I've tried to break them out so that you can see. So the first one of the map projections is known as a geometric map projection. This is the shape that we put the paper in so that we can go around the earth and try to project the earth onto that paper. So there are three most common ways of doing this. The first one is known as cylindrical. So it has a cylinder right here. And um, so what we do is we take a piece of paper and we wrap it around the, the globe and then we try to project the ground onto that piece of paper. So you can see here that we have things get, that get stretched out, especially close to, closer to the poles, they get really stretched out if we look at that. And, um, and then it's a little bit more narrow at the equator. If we look at conical, the conical means we make a little cone with our paper and we put it over top of the earth. And so oftentimes it's referred to as a conic. And so there's the earth here. So here we can see that the further away that we get from the, like the, the point, which we actually kind of cut off that point anyways, but the further away we get from the point, the more stretched out it gets. And so that, that's another perspective. So you can see how the areas are gonna start changing depending on how you, how, how you, wrap, around, you wrap it around your earth. The last one is known as planar. It's also known as, as muthal. So as I mentioned here, it's also known as asmuthal. So it's just taking the piece of paper and putting it flat, touching the earth's surface at some point. And so here we can see that. So, Cylindrical is often used with um, like with larger areas. So for example, the UTM projection, Mercator is referring to cylindrical. It actually has a special addition to that, but, um, but the UTM, it uses a cylinder that wraps around the earth and makes nice neat squares for us. And so that's really handy when we're trying to do metric measurements like in meters. So, 
and that's why we do cylindrical. Um, larger areas works better for that, and I. And and so that's why you're going to see most globe maps are always going to be a cylindrical projection. A conic projection we use for long northern countries. So Canada and Russia are really good countries to use a conic. And the reason we do that is because it reduces the amount of distortion at those areas. So you can see here on this perspective that the, the paper actually touches the earth lower down in the map. So it'd be kind of like along here. Now if that's the case, then, well when it is the case, it is the case, it's not if it is, but it is the case, it, it actually does represent the pole a little better. Here we don't even see the pole. Like you can see this arrow, it just goes straight up. So it doesn't even go onto the earth. So you can imagine like at any other UTM map or any globe map, the Arctic's really super stretched out and so is the Antarctic where in the conic, you can actually represent that, that pole much better with a much better accuracy. So our, a lot of our area measurements and even distance measurements are m better represented using a conic in, in Canada. The last one is planar. Usually a planar um, is used on the, like on the poles. You're not going to see it kind of stuck to the side of the earth. Uh, there's the odd projection that does that, but, um, but for the most part, it's like stuck on the poles and we use it for Arctic mapping. So when I worked up in the Arctic, I have, that was part of my, my research stuff that I have worked with. We use a lot of planar maps because of the fact that it actually represents the Arctic and it will reduce the amount of distortion and stretch that you're going to see or squishingness because that's kind of what happens here is squishing in the Arctic. Um, the squishing, it actually does a really good job of, of representing it and removes any errors that um, that are represented based on like the direction in particular because we know that it's going to be a 360 circle and so it it's very handy that way so those are the three major ones so every single one of the categories that come after this for the most part are going to have to show every single one of these geometric projections so the next one i call orientation map projections. It just shows me the orientation of how I place the paper on that Earth's surface. So there are, um, there's three major types for this. So there's oblique, which is some weird angle. So this is like the drunken party hat for the conical. Cylindrical, it's also at some weird angle. Um, if you have azimuthal, you're kind of sticking it on top of like the U.S. <laughs> so, um, or, you know, sticking it on Europe. So that, like um, continental Europe. So if you stick it on there, it's at some weird angle. So you got to be able to do like some strange math with it to be able to get proper distances and everything. The other one is equatorial. This is also known as polar or it's also known as normal. So it has three names, which makes things really confusing. <laughs> so pretty much anything that doesn't match the other two words is probably this one. This one um, is pointing straight up. So we have the conic, which is just straight up. It's po like the, the point is at the pole. Makes sense. Um, the cylindrical is straight up and down. So it is also like the open part is at the poles. The last one is transverse and transverse is when it's pointing along the equator. So the equator has the pointy part here. So it's a sideways party hat <laughs> and like perfectly sideways and um, or the cylinder is turned on its side. And so the empty spots actually point away from the earth. So the nice thing about the transverse is like, especially cylindrical is that now I can actually see the poles. So the universal transverse mercator that indicates this, right? So when we get into talking about the, the UTM a little bit more, you'll understand how this works because um, it is a transverse and it is a mercator, which means that it is cylindrical. So it's associated with that. The next one is in the intersection. I call it intersection. It could be called surface or surface normal um, projection. There's a bunch of other names that I've seen for it. So the main two categories is tangent and secant. So tangent only touches the Earth's surface at one point or along a line. So here with the cylinder, the cylinder actually follows the line that it touches. So if we look at this straight up and down line, if that was touching the edge, it would actually follow the circle all the way around in the cylinder. 
So that would be a cylindrical tangent. Conic only touches the Earth's surface at one point. So if it was touching the surface here, it's at, it follows a ring around, right? Because the conic touches all the way around the entire circle. So it's going to be touching there. Azimuthal, it touches the, for example, the pole at the center point of the pole. Now with that one, that means that there's only that line or that single point in, in azimuthal um, that has zero error because it is represented and scaled down correctly. So that's what is handy with the tangent. Now secant is a little bit more complicated with math, but it does actually help reduce um, even more of the error. So here with cylindrical, you can see this white area in here is, uh, stick, is, is the part that's sticking out of the cylinder. So the cylinder actually is a little bit smaller and it cuts through the Earth's surface. What this does is it now creates, in, in this example here, it creates two lines with no error, which is great because that means that the error on the outside of this, so like all in the center, all of this is going to be somehow related because it it goes up and then down, right? So it's reduced. And then anything on the inside is also reduced. So really handy to use a secant because just because of that that possibility. Now with a conic, same idea, I have two circles that it's going to be touching. This should be like little grayed out on the bottom here, and it isn't grayed out, but it should be. So with, with this, um, anything on the inside is going to be sh like shrank down, has to be pushed down, and then anything on the outside needs to be expanded. We're going to be getting into how this works, like and how the math works on this when I get into scale factors. The azimuthal, now you can see that it has a ring around that is actually correct, that is with the zero error. It has a scale factor of one. So I'm going to start throwing in these terminology, this terminology just so you can get an idea of it. And then um, when we get to it, you're going to be like, okay, I've heard Karina say this several times, so now I know what it, what it sounds like. So, um, so that's where what this intersection projection is, is like where does the paper cut or touch the Earth's surface, on the surface, not, not so much in the surface, but on the surface. The next one is a perspective projection. So this one is how does the light pass through the Earth and go onto the piece of paper. So, um, this is this is a little bit more difficult to describe. You can imagine taking a a see-through globe, and you have a light bulb, and you put the light bulb on the inside. So if you put it right in the center of that circle, it's going to project everything onto the paper. So we're looking at an azimuthal projection here in this image, and so a mnemonic. Um, projection is the, the light bulb right smack in the center. So you can see how the light kind of comes up and through, and we're seeing these lines being projected. So here, uh, if it was an azimuthal projection, and a tangent azimuthal projection in this case, it, it projects out and you can see how the grid forms based on that. So that's mnemonic. Mnemonic is center. Stereographic, it puts it at the far end of the Earth. So now we, we're using the full diameter of the Earth rather than just the radius. And so here we take this and we project it out. The nice thing about stereographic is look at how nicely that grid forms. So it, it makes a much better grid for that. Then there's orthographic. So stereographic, mnemonic, and orthographic. So orthographic is the light is at infinity away. Okay, so you can imagine that light is like way down here and it goes all the way up and it keeps going up to the to the Earth, Earth's surface and passes through and then makes a projection this way. The nice thing about this orthographic projection is that it doesn't have an angular distortion. All of these do. Okay, so this one it just projects it straight up, so we reduce that angular projection, so it does allow for um, better direction on it. So that is a benefit of that. So those are the the major categories of this. So if you think of some, I mean you think of something such as the like a conic, um, let, let me go back <laughs> and, and go through this. So if we're going to go through 
just so you can see this because otherwise it's easy for me to do it in front of a classroom but not here so if i have a cylindrical equatorial tangent projection that uses a mnemonic projection you can think of the light bulbs in the center the tangent just means it's touching around the side equatorial means it is sticking up properly uh, like uh, like looks upright like a can and it is a cylinder so you would put all of these together when you're describing a map and that's what's really um and, and so when you're looking at a map you can go okay now i know how it's being set up so we'll be moving on to objective 7-2 in the next video